What's going on ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the simulator series. In today's episode, we're going to be setting the maximum amount of food that a player can hold. As always, if you guys do enjoy the video or it does help you out, make sure you smash the like button, also hit the subscribe button, and turn this post notifications on if you want to get notified when I upload more Roblox development content. Additionally, I do have a Patreon if you guys like to support me and gain access to all the scripts and the game file that I make during this episode. There's a link down below in the description and you guys can go and check that out. With that being said, let's get into it. Currently in our game, we can actually purchase or equip different DNAs, which are meant to set the max limit of food that we we can actually hold and when we equip a new dna we can see that the limit doesn't actually change for how much food we're able to hold additionally when we do get food we can see that we're able to go way past the limit so right now we're at 75 over 50 and we can keep going over that limit and that's what we want to fix today if we take a look at eating simulator the simulator that we're actually recreating we can see that whenever we get food we actually don't go over our maximum limit which right now is 30. additionally whenever the current food that we have is equal to the max a notification pops up in the middle of our screen with two buns that we can either sell or go to the shop and it also allows us to purchase the infinite food storage here as well so that's what we're going to be recreating today so the first thing that we want to do is we want to modify our currency gui to actually display the maximum amount of food a player can have to do this we want to go inside of the starter gui the currency gui and then open up the manager now looking inside of the manager we can see that we have the change value function which actually sets the text on the text labels and we can see for the food frame to the amount slash and then 50. so this is the number that we want to change so that it doesn't display 50 it displays the maximum food the player can currently hold now the first thing that we want to do is we want to figure out how much food the player can currently hold based off their currently equipped dna so what we want to do is we want to get the replicated storage so local replicated storage and now that we have the replicated storage we can actually get the dna config directly from there so we're going to say dna config equals require replicated storage wait for child config wait for child dna config and now we have the dna config now let's create a function for getting the maximum food the player can actually have we're going to say local function get max food and that's not going to take any arguments now the way that we're going to figure this out is we're going to loop through the dna config table we're going to say local underscore dna in i pairs dna config do and we can actually rename dna to config because remember when we loop through the dna config what we're getting is this config line right here then we'll get this config line right there and then that config line as well so that's what we're getting every single time we go through the loop so with this we then want to check if the config.id equals and now we want to see if the config id is equal to the dna the player currently has equipped and we can figure out the player's currently equipped dna by saying player.inventory.equipped dna dot value and that'll give us the dna that the player currently has equipped and if they are equal then we know that the config dot stat is the player's maximum food now what we're going to do with this number is we're actually going to create a new variable up here and that's going to be called max food and for right now we're just going to set that to zero but then whenever we call this function we're going to modify the max food variable and set that to the config dot stat and that'll give us the correct the maximum food the player can currently hold instead of saying the player's maximum food is always 50 we can remove that number then we can do dot dot and say max max food and that'll now display the correct max food we're still not done yet though what we then need to do is we need to listen for every single time the player equips a brand new dna item the reason for that is because every single time the player equips a new dna item that's going to affect the player's maximum food and the way that we're going to do this is we are just going to use the same directory right here and we're going to use the same event that we do right here we currently listen for the food object to change and this time what we're going to do is we're going to actually listen for the equip dna object to change so we're going to say dot change and then we are going to create a function inside of here and then what we want to do is we want to say get max food instead of actually calling this get max food we could just say set max food because that's what it actually does so set max food and then what we need to do is we then need to call the change value function so it actually updates on the player's screen so we're going to say change value and we're just going to pass through food and we'll pass through the player's current food value which is right here and now when the script first starts up what we want to do is before we change the values we actually want to set the max food so that when the value gets changed at first it'll display the correct max food and now we should be able to test this out and have no issues so let's go ahead and start up our game and now we see when we load in our max food is three and our current food is 507 so that works exactly as it should now let's go into the shop let's go into the dna and change the dna that we currently have equipped and we can see now that we bought the first dna which gives us a max food of one we now have the max food of one displayed on our screen as well so this works perfectly for two for three and everything else like that that is awesome what we then probably want to do is we probably want to modify the dna config we probably don't want the maximum 
maximum of food to be one. We probably want it to be something like 150 and 100. You can do whatever you want to, but I think this will be a little bit better for improving the example and how it looks. And we can test this once again, just to make sure that everything did change. So we now see 507 out of 100. If we equip another DNA, that's 50 and this should be 10. And there we go. That works exactly as it should. Perfect. So now we're pretty much done with the currency GUI. Now on the server side, we actually want to limit the amount of food the player can actually receive. And we don't want the player to go above their maximum food limit. The way that we're going to do this is by going into the server script service, going into utils and opening up our rewards module script. Now inside of here is where we actually reward the player food. This is the method that's always going to be called for whenever we do it. So that's why we're choosing to enforce the maximum limit inside of here, because then every single time we reward the player food for whatever way we decide to do it, they will never go above their limit, which is exactly what we want to prevent. So now we need to figure out the maximum amount of food based off the player's currently equipped DNA. And we actually did that in our currency GUI manager with the set max food. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to copy this function. We'll paste it right into here. Instead of saying set max food, we're actually going to say get max food. And this time we will just return the config.stat rather than setting a variable. And now we have two errors. We have one, the DNA config and the player. So what we want to do is we want to add a player argument right here. And now we need the DNA config. And we can go ahead and easily get the DNA config by doing it the same way that we did in our local script. So we now have the DNA config. But to optimize this a little bit more, instead of using wait for child, we are going to use periods because we can since we're on the server side with this. And there we go. Now a quick note, you might be thinking, monsters, shouldn't we put this function inside of a module script because we're using it in one script and then we're using it in another script. And realistically, I have already thought about that. And yes, you definitely could. The thing is though, is that since this function is shared between the client and the server, if we look inside the replicated storage, we haven't created any utility module scripts yet. Those are currently inside of the server script service. So the client can't access any of these current utilities. So that would require us to create a utilities folder inside of the replicate storage, then create a utilities module script. And in my opinion, for one specific function, I don't think it's worth going through all of the extra work, especially for only using this function in two different locations. It really doesn't seem necessary. Anyways, with that all being said, now let's look inside of the food method. The way that we determine the amount of food that we're going to give to the player is multiplying the amount by the multiplier. And then the result from this equation right here, we add it to the player's current food value. We want to create a new variable called total, and we're actually going to set that to pretty much exactly what we have right here. So we can copy and paste that up here. And what we're going to do to make sure that we get this equation correct is we are going to surround amount times multiplier in parentheses. Although I don't think you actually need to do that because of PEMDAS, but I'm not amazing at math. So I'm going to do that anyway. And then rather than saying plus equals, we're just going to say plus. So what that's going to do is it's going to set this variable to this number plus the result of this equation right here. And that's exactly what we're doing right down here. It's just written a little bit differently. Now that we have the total, we want to get the max amount of food that the player can actually hold. So we're going to say local max equals get max food, and we're going to pass through the player. Then we want to check if the total is greater than max. So if the player is unable to hold that amount of food without going over the limit, then what we want to do is we want to set the player's current food value directly to the maximum amount of food that they can hold so we don't go over that limit. Otherwise, we're able to set the player's food to the total because that would be under or equal to the maximum amount of food. So we can go ahead and start up the game and test this out, see if it all works. Currently, since I started the game, we have 507 food, but let's go ahead and clear our food and now start using our french fry. And we can see we're not able to go over 10 out of 10. And we can see we can keep doing this, selling our food, and we can see we're never actually going above 10 food, which is exactly what we want. We could even test this a little bit differently. So if instead of getting three food each time, we can do it with just one food to make sure the same result happens. So let's go ahead and do that. And we can see that our food is hard limited to 10 and we're not able to go above that number. And that's exactly what we want. Amazing. The final thing that we want to do is we want to add that GUI notification that pops up on the screen when the player's food is equal to the max amount of food that they can actually hold. So inside of the replicate storage, let's open up remotes and we can create a new remote event and we don't need to put that in the shop folder. We'll just put that in the remote folder and we'll rename that to max food. You can rename this to a couple of different things like full food or food max. Like there's a bunch of different ways that you can write this. We're just going to say max food and that'll notify the player that they're holding the maximum amount of food that they can. And now what we want to do is we want to get the remotes folder. So we're going to say local remotes equals replicate storage dot remotes. And now we can use that and we can say remotes dot max food fire client. And then we can pass through the player. So now we'll notify the player anytime they have the max amount of food. And now we need to hook this up on the client. So let's go ahead inside of the star GUI, create a new screen GUI. You can rename this to max food, max food notification. It really doesn't matter. And then what I'm going to do is inside of the shop folder, inside of the shop GUI, we have this confirmation GUI that we created a little while ago. I'm going to copy this and then I'm going to paste that directly into the max food screen GUI. And now let's go ahead and make this visible so we can see this. And now that we're looking at this screen GUI, we can see that it shares a lot of similarities with the GUI that we actually want to 
to create. So that's why I'm using this confirmation GUI right here because it allows us to do a lot less work and not have to configure so many different things because we already have most of it already created. So we can rename the frame from confirmation to just frame. It really doesn't matter. Then the text label we can modify and we can say max food exclamation mark. And we probably want there to be two different text labels. So we can probably like move this one up a little bit. And I think that's pretty good. And then let's make sure that we center it. So 0 0.5, 0 0.5. Five. There we go. That's centered. And we can rename the text label from text label to title. And we should change the font from source to probably Gotham Bold, maybe Gotham Black. I think Gotham Black is probably what we want to do. And now we want to duplicate the title and we can rename this to just the message. Really doesn't matter. And then we want to move this down a little bit. So we'll move this down to like right here. I think that's pretty good. I actually want to make this a little bit smaller. So something like that. Let's make sure that it is centered. So 0 0.5, 0 0.5. There we go. And then we want to change the text of this to sell your food or upgrade your DNA exclamation mark. That looks pretty good, but I think we might want to move it a little bit closer to the title like that. Let's check on mobile, see if it looks good. Yep, everything looks pretty good. So now what we want to do is instead of calling this a confirmation button, we can call this the sell button. And we probably want to move this up a little bit more. So something like that, I would say. And then the text, we want the text to be sell. And once again, we'll change the font. I don't know why maybe I, I guess i forgot to change the font when i was creating the confirmation gui but we can change this to gotham bold and now we have the sell button and then we also want to make the shop button so just like that we now have the shop button and then we're gonna move this down a little bit but i'm moving my buttons down a little bit weirdly i'm not gonna lie i was kind of like resizing them to move it down but what we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure that the size is exactly the same so paste like that. All right. So now the sizes are perfectly good. What we need to do for the shop button is we want to change the background color from a green to a purple. So something like that. I think that purple is probably good enough. The text we want to set from sell to shop. And now that all looks pretty good. The final thing that we want to do is we want to add the infinite food storage below this as well. So what we can do is we can rename the frame from frame to notification. And then we can go ahead and duplicate this. And then we want to make it a little bit smaller. And we're basically just going to move it down a little bit. Just like that. We want a little bit of space still in between. And we probably want to make this a little bit smaller. So that's pretty good. I think we're just going to rename it to extra for right now because that keeps the name short and that works. Then we can delete the extra button. We can leave one of the buttons. So we'll just go ahead and leave the sell button and then we'll remove the message. Now we just have the title and the sell button. So what we want to do is this title. We actually want to move this directly to the bottom. So that is pretty decent. And then the sell button, we want to make a pretty big and we want to basically just move that towards the top. And then let's make sure that we center it. There we go. And the color of this button is going to be a yellowish kind of orange. So something like that, that works. And the text of this button is going to be an infinity symbol. I'm not sure if they used an emoji or if there's like literally a text like symbol that you can use for that. But for right now, we're just going to use that emoji right there because that's the quickest thing that we can do. And then let's go ahead and change the title text to infinite food storage. And that looks good. Let's go ahead, check the mobile device. That all looks good. Everything looks perfect. And I don't see any issues. So I think we're all good to go. Now we can go ahead and start to script this. So from our currency GUI, I'm going to copy the manager script that we already have and paste that directly into our max food GUI so that we can kind of start from a little bit of a template. So for this, we won't need the DNA config. We'll need the replicated storage though. And we can pretty much delete all of this stuff, including this variable right here. And we can delete some of these as well. So now we just have the currency GUI, which is script.parent and the frame right here. We'll start renaming these variables as well. So we're going to say max food gy equals script dot parent and then find first child we want to get the notification frame so we'll rename this to notification frame with lowercase n and we copy and paste that and we will get the extra frame so we will get extra just like that now we have both of the frames then inside of the notification frame we want to get the sell button the exit button and the shop button so we could say local sell button equals notification frame dot instead of find first child i'm just going to use the period because we can safely do that here so we're going to say dot sell boom we got the sell button now let's do the exact same thing for the shop button so shop button and now once again we're going to do the exact same thing for the exit button and there we go we now got the exit button then the final thing that we want to do is inside of the extra frame we want to get the sell button but we also want to rename the sell button to buy button i guess because remember this button refers to buying the infinite food storage so that's why we're going to call it buy button 
bun for now. So let's get the buy bun and we're going to say extra frame dot buy button there we go we've got the buy button and now let's rename the variable to buy button and there we go we're all good to go so for the exit button we'll script that first we're going to say exit button dot mouse button one click connect and what we're going to do is we're simply just going to disable the max food gy so we're going to set the enable to false so we no longer see it and then from the replicated storage we actually want to get the remotes folder so we're going to say local remotes equals replicated storage wait for child remotes there we go we've now got the remotes folder and now inside of the remotes we want want to get the max food remote event and we want to use the dot on client event and we're going to connect that to a function right here and what we're going to do is we're simply going to enable the max food gui so we're going to set the enable to true instead of false and now that'll make the notification pop up on our screen so we now have a way to open and close this let's go ahead and actually test this in our game to make sure that works oh it's automatically popped up on our screen we want to make sure that this actually starts with not enabled so there we go now it won't be displayed by default and then let's go ahead and click and we you can see max food just popped up when we have 10 out of 10 when we click sell nothing actually happens yet but let's go ahead and sell real quick turn that off and now we see we did exit that let's go ahead and get our food up again and we can see that once we hit the max food it does pop up on our screen again and every single time after that it does as well so that works perfectly the next thing that we want to script is teleporting the player to the cell location so we're going to say cell bun dot mouse bun one click colon connect and create another function inside of here remember in like the last episode when we create the buttons let's go inside of the manager and see how we actually teleport the player we can see right here that we get the player's character and then we set the primary c frame to the cell part dot c frame so let's do the exact same thing that we did here and what we can do is we can copy this and we can paste that right inside of here so there we go we now have the workspace and we're getting the cell part from the workspace which is this part right here and then what we want to do is we want to get the character and if we get the character we want to teleport the player okay so we'll copy this if we click this button what we want to do we want to try to get the player's character and then if we find their character then we just want to teleport the player to the cell part dot C frame and that should work perfectly. So let's go ahead and start this up and see if that does. So let's try to get the notification to pop up again. Let's click sell and we see we get teleported there. So that works perfectly. Now we also probably want to hide the GUI once we click that button. So what we're going to do is we're going to set the enable to false and we can do it just like that. And we pretty much want to do the exact same thing for when we click the shop button, but rather than teleporting the player to the cell part, we want to teleport them to the shop part. So we're going to say shop button. And whenever we click that, we want to get their character. And now we need to get the shop part. So shop part and I'm not sure what this is called but shop open and if you guys are kind of confused about this look inside of your workspace look inside of scriptable objects and we see we have the cell part which is right here so inside of scriptable objects it's called cell and then once again inside of the scriptable objects we have the shop open part so now instead of the cell we can just use the shop open c frame and that will teleport the player to the shop part so let's go ahead and test that out so let's get to max food get the notification pop up click sell get teleported to that part and now click shop and we get teleported to the shop and the shop appears for so that works exactly as it should perfect the final thing that we need to do is we need to script the actual buy button which remember once again refers to the infinite food storage button the thing is though is that creating dev products or game passes is definitely going to be its own episode because that can be a lot that goes into it and this episode is already long enough so what we're going to do for now is we're going to say buy bun dot mouse bun one click colon connect function and what i'm going to do is i'm going to print add buy game pass here so that anytime you click that button that i will remember that I do need to add that game pass whenever I create the specific episode on adding all the game passes or developer products. So ladies and gentlemen, with that being said, we are completely finished with this episode. Hopefully you guys did enjoy. If you guys did or the video did help you out, make sure you smash the like button, also the subscribe button, and turn this post notifications on if you want to get notified when I upload more Roblox development content. Additionally, I do have a Patreon if you guys like this for me and gain access to all the scripts and the game file that I made during this episode. There's a link down below in the description and you guys can go and check that out. With that being said, I hope that you guys have a great day and I'll see you guys in the next episode.